Hey, thank you for tuning in for another episode of the State of the Market. I'm Brandon Barnes, this is Nathan Wyland. On this episode, we're gonna be talking about appreciation levels. Now we've seen appreciation levels that are in the double digits and it's been awesome for people that own homes. Right. They're just seeing things shoot right up. Problem comes when you try to buy something. Yes, and historically, we've seen around four to 5% appreciation. Obviously, that tells us that real estate is a great investment and has been for a long time. Especially when they hit these double digits, then you're just, you just got all kinds of equity. One of the things that we've seen with rising interest rates is that that puts downward pressure on prices because if you're used to being able to afford a $600,000 house because your mortgage rate was 2.75% or 3% and then rates go up to 5 or 6%, you can't afford that $600,000 house anymore. So you're what you can afford drops, therefore there's less buyers for the higher priced houses. We start to see that start to push down on appreciation rates just a little bit. And that shows exactly why both sellers and buyers should care about interest rates. That's true. Now think about it this way though, when you're when you're seeing appreciation rates drop, we're not seeing them drop below zero. We're seeing them go from 18% or 12% down to a more nominal 8% or maybe a national average 4 to 5% on a normal market. It's kind of like driving along at 100 miles an hour, you're probably familiar with, right. and then you, you slow down to 30. It seems like you've really slowed down, but at least you're not in reverse going backwards. Yeah, you're still going forward, you're still making money on your investment, and uh, it, it's still a positive return. Yep, yep. So that brings us into kind of, will this drop in appreciation kind of trigger into a housing bubble? It's all over the market. That's all we hear right now. Housing bubble, housing correction, all kinds of things coming up because we're seeing this slowdown of appreciation, so that must be what's ahead. Articles everywhere. And that's nothing new. Let's take a peek at a couple of the articles that we've seen over the years and look at what the impact had been if buyers listened to those writers. Housing today, a bubble larger than 2006. Appreciation that year was 5.1%, costing a buyer $15,000. $15,000 just from, you know, hey, uh, it looks like the housing bubble's back, it's gonna be worse in 2006, I'm not buying. Boy, you know, a year goes by and you're like, wow, I really messed that up. But that's nothing new. In 2016, uh, in August, we had, we're in a new housing bubble. Appreciation that year was 5.4%. That would have cost a buyer $17,000. Right, so in less than a year, we're talking $32,000 from that October 2015 to that August 2016. So $32,000 in appreciation. Next one, November 2017. Homeownership doesn't build wealth, study finds. Well, it sure didn't for renters as the average appreciation rate was 6.1% that year, costing buyers $20,000 dollars another twenty thousand dollar loss they, and that I didn't remember that big housing bubble I didn't remember that it was worse than than you know 2008 no I think the only thing that study showed that year was a whoopsie September 2018 uh, it's better to rent than to buy in today's housing market well uh, that was a 4.1 percent error costing buyers fourteen thousand dollars I love it how about uh, July of 2019 the housing market is about to shift in a bad way for buyers still saw four point zero appreciation yeah fifteen thousand dollars there uh, it was bad for buyers they should have bought instead of listened to that advice I had buyers that didn't buy in that time period because they were oh yeah no the housing markets gonna improve prices are gonna drop down for us how did they do since then let's let's look at another another title here this is uh, July of no let's do December December of 2019 next year will be hard on the housing market that was kind of a uh, eerie that was that was actually uh, it wasn't hard on the housing market, but it certainly was on the rest of the world. Yeah. Um, next year will be hard on the housing market, especially in these big cities. 16% appreciation rate costing buyers. $61,000. And uh, so as you can tell, this from 2015 up to 2019, massive gains oh, yeah. that uh, had people bought. It's basically just the appreciation of their property, their value, uh, working for them, making them real money. Yeah, but my favorite one though is this July of 2021. This is this is just a year ago, as of like today. Housing boom is over as new home sales fall to pandemic low. How did we do on appreciation over the last year? 
Yeah, so on the last year, uh, we have double digit appreciation costing buyers who waited tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. And we have people, um, clients who waited and ended up paying almost $200,000 more for that same home. As we had talked about in previous episodes as well too, we're still seeing 17 days on market for a national average for a home. And here in Colorado, 5.5 or more offers on a single home. So, I thought newspapers had gotten expensive. Uh, wow, the advice that's in them is uh, apparently just outrageously expensive. Well, and if anything that we've learned over the last couple of years is that that doom and gloom and fear sells. So yeah, obviously uh, have had quite a few analysts and studies that have been way off just since 2015, oh. and I'm sure they went before that as well. Well, let's take this to a different area. Obviously, um, prices are gonna go down during a recession, right? I mean, prices always dip over houses through a recession, don't they? Isn't that kind of the trend? So ever since uh, the, the last six recessions that we've seen, going way back to the 1980s, the only time that housing prices have fallen during a recession was during the 2008 recession. Because and that was caused by housing. Exactly. Uh, everything else, we see appreciation still. It's just not at that double digit value, but back to closer to that historically four to five percent. Let's look at some of the numbers on that. In the 1980s, we saw a nasty recession through there, but home prices still increased 6.1%. That was just in 1980 alone. In 1981, the, as the recession was continuing, home prices increased three and a half percent. So in the 1991 recession, Prices fell just 1.9%, pretty nominal, yeah. uh, especially when you're looking at the return on other investments during that time frame. So they don't go up every single recession, but they certainly didn't drop to a, a huge double-digit number like they did through the housing bubble. Right. Uh, in the 2001 recession, home prices grew by 6.6%. <laughs> then we get to the 2008 housing bubble recession, that's when prices fell at 19.7%. Ouch. So pretty, pretty rough drop I right there. I still remember that. Too. Sometimes I wake up cold sweat, telling, uh, my, telling my daughter she's going to have to eat Cheerios for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The one good thing is, is that Alicia loves Cheerios. That is a good. That is a good piece of that. <laughs> oh, and by the way, these numbers were according to Core Logic. That was out of the balance. Yeah. So the, in, the, we're just not making these numbers up. In the 2020 recession, which was really kind of different than any other previous recession that we've seen, just because of the time frame of it and what caused it, uh, housing prices grew by 6% on average there. Interesting. So, okay, so we probably don't have a bubble on our hands. We're not seeing that. Uh, what about a housing correction? Well, what is a housing correction? I've, I've read a couple articles that we're, we're facing a housing correction. What's the definition of that? You know, so the definition for the housing correction is a decline of 10% or greater in the price of a security asset or a financial market. So I don't think that we're going to see a housing correction here at all. What we may see is prices does not appreciate as fast as we were talking about, and then maybe start to stay on the market a few more days longer than the, the national average of 17 that we had right. in April of this year. So correction drop of 10%. Analysts are saying we're probably seeing appreciation about 8.9%. Right. Big gap. And big reason, reason of that is, it's like we had talked about in previous episodes, is going back to supply and demand. There's still so much demand for housing and we're not seeing the number of new homes that are being built uh, come onto the market. Right, right. So I hope you've enjoyed the series. In summary, we talked about is there a housing bubble coming up? Data doesn't really look like it. A housing correction, nothing along that line that we really see. Um, we were also seeing appreciation rates normalize. Normalize. What's the word? It ain't normalize. Return to normal. Normalize? Normalize. Nailed it. Historically Normalized. average. Maybe five, four to five percent, something along that line. Right. Uh, point being, I still think that uh, housing is a great place to put your money in terms of an investment. Nice thing with housing is you get to live in your investment. Yeah, there's no other investment out there that you get to live in. Right. right. That's very true. And with, re and with rents expected to keep going up about eight percent a year, it's nice to lock in your cost of living. Yes. No now, between not only an interest rate, uh, you, but you're also building that appreciation where if you rent when you leave that home or that apartment, you're not going to get anything in return. So it looks like we're definitely heading into a recession. Doesn't look like it's all doom and gloom though, especially for housing. Right. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a good one.